1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. On verses 15, the Bible says, For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Verse 16, Therefore I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timot to you. For therefore I urge you to imitate me. He said, Amen. Even though you have many instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. Even though you have many instructors in uh -huh. Christ, mm. you do not have many fathers. fathers. And I have heard so many people Say there is nothing like a spiritual father. Amen. There is nothing like a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. But First Corinthians chapter sixteen, uh -huh. as Paul was addressing the church of Corinth, mm -hmm. he addressed them as his children, Amen. and him being their spiritual wow. covering and their spiritual wow. father. Amen. Hallelujah. So, a father can be somebody who is an uncle, who is a brother, who is an elder brother. A father can be a spiritual father in the church Amen. who guides you, who corrects you, who directs you, who rebukes you. Amen. And we have three types of fathers on this earth. We have God the Father, Amen. which is the heavenly father. Amen. And we have the earthly father, mm -hmm. which I call the biological father. father. And then we have the spiritual father, father which I call the spiritual father covering. Amen. So when you are in a church, your pastor becomes your spiritual father, not your biological father. father. And he's your spiritual father because in the realms of the spirit, he is the one that molds you. Amen. He is the one that directs you. He is the one that speaks to you, corrects you, Amen. ordains you, prays for you, Amen. teaches you the ways of God and the ways of life. Amen. Are we together? Amen. And then the biological father is directly the father that impregnated your mother mm -hmm. and gave birth to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we have the heavenly father, we have the biological father, and then we have the spiritual father. 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 Amen. We have the spiritual father. And Paul is saying that even though you have many instructors, father figure, uh -huh. you have many instructors, meaning you have a lot of father figures in your life, there, is, there can only be one spiritual father. Mm -hmm. And I, Paul, I have begotten you Amen. and I have given birth to you mm -hmm. spiritually Amen. in Christ. So Paul understands that there is Christ who is head of the church, mm -hmm. who is father to the church, who is husband to the church. But physically, he has begotten you as his church member, as his son in the Lord, yes. as his daughter in the Lord. So there is something we call spiritual fatherhood. Amen. Are we Amen. together? Amen. Amen. Every great man of God that lived before in the Bible, they all had very great and mighty spiritual fathers that gave them direction, Amen. that gave them instructions. And you will understand that Moses married a daughter of Jethro. Uh -huh. And Jethro was a priest. Amen. And there came a point and there came a time mm -hmm. after Moses had been mentored by Jethro for 40 years yes. and he started his ministry. Jethro visited him uh -huh. as a spiritual father. And when he saw how Moses was conducting his ministry, uh -huh. immediately he called Moses, sat Moses down yes. and gave him instruction. Amen. He said, this kind of ministry you are doing, you will die before your time. Amen. You shouldn't sit from morning till evening. Mm -hmm. attending to the people, praying for the people yes. where you have no hands to even eat where uh -huh. you have no time to even eat uh -huh. when you have no time to even attend to your wife and to your children Amen. Amen. and immediately he gave Moses this direction uh -huh. Moses seeing him as a spiritual head and uh -huh. as a spiritual father immediately obey Amen. and change the way he was conducting ministry Amen. spiritual fatherhood Amen. is very important Amen. Amen. as much as physical fatherhood is equally important. Amen. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus gave a parable. And in fact, the whole Luke chapter 15, the whole chapter is for fatherhood. Amen. 
And then one of the parables Jesus gave was a woman who had lost a coin. And he did everything in her power. In fact, the Bible says she swept the whole house looking for this coin. And another parable talked about a shepherd who had lost a sheep. And he had to leave the rest of the sheep and follow after the, the lost sheep. And the third parable talked about a father who had two sons. And the elder one was a passive son. And the younger one was a very aggressive son who went to the father and demanded for her his portion of inheritance. And the Bible said, after he got his inheritance, he traveled to a faraway country. And did not invest. Spent everything he had Amen. on women. Mm. Living a luxurious life. Mm. Sleeping around with prostitutes and paying them. Never mm. invested. Amen. Never took them because he had no father Amen. in his life. Amen. To give him direction mm. and to give him correction. Amen. And the Bible said, after a while there was a harvest. No, after a while there was a hunger. And when hunger came, because huh? he had no direction to invest, yes. he had nothing. And mm. therefore he had to get employment Amen. by feeding pigs. Mm. And it became so severe that he had to become like the Amen. pigs and eat the food of the pigs and mm. sleep with the pigs. Amen. When you have no father figure in your life, mm. you will lack direction. Amen. Amen. And majority of the time, most people who have grown up without a father figure in their life, mm. it is so very difficult for you to take rebuke and Amen. to take correction. Amen. It is so very difficult when you have grown up without a father figure in your life to 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 obediently Amen. accept correction and accept rebuke. Amen. Because the moment you, you realize to say somebody else has come to do what your father was not around to do for you and is trying to correct you and is trying to rebuke you and is trying to give you direction, you see it as an attack. Amen. And immediately you have to rebel. Mm. And rebellion, the Bible says it's like the sin of witchcraft. Amen. It's like the sin of, of witchcraft. witchcraft. I pray for you in the name of Jesus today. Yes. That as God mm. has given you grace. Yes. Amen. To sit under the anointing of a father. Yes. You will be willing enough to be obedient to correction and to rebuke. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why do you need a father in your life? Somebody may ask. Why do I need a father in my life? You need a father in your life because... Fatherhood is a solution to all social and national crises. Fatherhood is a solution to all social and financial and national and even spiritual crises. Everything about this life is connected to fatherhood. Everything in this life is connected to fatherhood. And I wondered why in the Old Testament or even in the New Testament, Women were so restricted when it comes to spirituality, yes. when it comes to God, when it comes to the kingdom. Women were not considered as human beings. Women was not, were not considered. You remember in scripture where Jesus had to pray over the fish and the, and the five loaves of bread. Uh -huh. yes. They counted men. Mm -hmm. They counted men. And I wonder if there were no women in that ministry. Uh -huh. If there were no women in Jesus' crusade. There were women in Jesus' crusade. Oh, yeah. But women and children were not considered. Mm. You remember in the book of Genesis. Yes. When Jacob called all his sons or all his children. Yes. To bless them. At the time Jacob was blessing his children. There was one daughter. Uh -huh. There was one girl. There was one female. Uh -huh. Joseph had. And as Joseph was blessing all his children, the girl was left. Uh -huh. The girl was not prayed for. The girl was not blessed. And his future, her future was not foretold. Amen. And I wondered why in the kingdom or in the Bible, women were not considered. To the point that in certain churches, scripture has been misunderstood and Amen. mistranslated. Amen. If you are a woman, if you are a female, 
It is an abomination for you to come to the altar and hold the microphone and teach the word of God. Amen. And pray for people. Even give announcement. It is an abomination. Amen. If you are certain churches, when you go, as we became born again and we're growing up, certain churches, when you go, women are separated. They are seated here. Uh -huh. And men are also seated here. Mm -hmm. And these things, it is very common in some traditional churches. Amen. I don't know if it is still existing now, but those days when we became born again, when you go to a church, you realize that all the women are here uh -huh. and all the men are here. Mm -hmm. And I wondered why it is like that. Does it mean that if you are born again, you are not supposed to mingle with a woman? Does it mean that if you are born again, you are not supposed to eat the food of a woman? No. But in the kingdom, scripture has been misunderstood. Amen. And mistranslated. Some have gotten offended to the point that they will never return to the church again because they went to church uh -huh. and they saw a woman pastor preaching the word of God. Amen. A woman pastor teaching the word of God. Mm. But when Jesus died and he resurrected, the first person that came and announced the new chapter of the gospel was not any of the apostles who yes. walked and prayed with Jesus. Uh -huh. It was Mary, a female. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It was Mary, the female. Mm -hmm. When it is Mother's Day, the whole world come to a halt. The whole world come to a standstill. The whole world come to a full stop. Full stop. And everybody has to celebrate women, even if you don't have a mother, either spiritually or physically. Everybody has to celebrate women. But when it comes to Father's Day, there is a comma. There's no full stop. The world doesn't come to a halt. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. The world moves, even though it moves slowly. Amen. Amen. But this morning, I want you to understand that in the kingdom of God, uh -huh. There is no gender. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In the kingdom of God, there is no what? Gender. 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 Somebody will become offended when a prophet goes into the realm of the spirit and he began, he begins to describe angels. Mm. And he says, The angel I saw was a female angel. Uh -huh. Or the angel I saw was a male angel. Or the angel I saw was a child angel. Somebody will get offended and say, oh, This is abomination. In the kingdom of God, there is nothing like gender. Amen. 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 The same God of the male is the same God of the female. Amen. The same God who blesses the male is the same God who blesses the female. Amen. The same God who gave a child of the opposite sex, which is a female, is the same God who also gives a child of the opposite sex, which is a male. Amen. There is no gender in the sight of God Amen. and in the kingdom of of God as well. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Acts that there came a time that the whole church had to stop praying, has to stop having service. And they had to travel and look for the apostle Peter to come and pray and resurrect Dorcas. Mm. Dorcas was not a male. Mm -hmm. Dorcas was a female. And she was so important to the church uh -huh. even though she was of the opposite sex. So important to the church that they had to go and bring Peter from another town uh -huh. to travel all the way. No church, no service, until God has answered the prayer of the church for Dorcas to come back to life. Amen. 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 So Jacob blessed all his sons, but when he came to his daughter, I think the name of the daughter was Diana or Diana. When he came to the daughter, we, there is no record in scripture that Jacob blessed Dinah, his daughter. Mm. And I wonder to say why was she a daughter of Jacob and Jacob was blessing his children and Jacob left this woman. But we thank God that even in this generation, the narratives have changed. Amen. The mindset have changed. And we are celebrating women more than we are celebrating men. Hallelujah. Amen. Fatherhood is the solution to all social, spiritual, national crisis. Why you need a father? Without a father, a lot of young women, a lot of young men will end up in prison. And if you go to the prisons now, you realize that a lot of people who are there have become victims of the absence of fatherhood. 
they have become victims of the absence of what fatherhood. fatherhood it is either they lack that spiritual fatherhood or they lack that physical fatherhood that gives them direction and some women have taken it upon themselves in the name of avenging on the man who impregnated them and did not marry them they have taken it upon themselves to avenge uh -huh. the man by inciting the young woman or inciting the young son to hate the father and as a result the young woman will grow up without the covering and the direction of a father Amen. the young girl will grow up without the covering and the direction of a father Amen. as you are seated here in this church, beautiful and nice like this together with your wife or your husband god forbid but if there should be any problem between you and your wife your wife usually it is the women that have the tendency of confusing their children to side with them so they can grow hatred for the father and without a father there is no direction amen. Amen. amen amen the mother is a symbol of care and love the father becomes a symbol of authority and power amen are we together amen. amen the father becomes a symbol of what authority and power the mother becomes a symbol of care love. and love mm. the father becomes a symbol of power and what authority authority, authority. And scripture says that train a child yes. in a way that when he grows up, he will not depart from it. Amen. So the mother cares for the child. The mother loves the child. But the mother doesn't have the power and the authority to discipline the child. Amen. And that is where the father comes in. Mm. The father becomes that solution to give direction. Yes. Because no matter how slim the father is, there is something God has placed on a man, on a father. No matter how small or how poor he is, Amen. when the child is misbehaving and the father comes and says, Iwe, authority has spoken. Yes. Amen. Discipline has to manifest. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Amen. So there are a lot of people who are going about doing all manner of negative things in the world. Stealing, fighting, insulting, prostitution. The reason is because that authority, that direction has not been there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when you come into the church, you find out that such people, majority of them, not all of them, majority of them, when they see the father figure, they should have seen in their father, which who was not there, from the beginning, yes. when they see that father figure in such a man, they do everything in their power Amen. to ensure that they build a good relationship. Even when they want to go to the small room, they have to call the father and say, Father, mm -hmm. I am going to the small room. Even mm -hmm. when they make love to their wife, they will have to come and tell the father, spiritual father, I made love to my wife and it was very nice. Because growing up, they never had that father figure. Yes. There has never been that authoritative figure. Such people, even if they go out and make mistakes, even if they see a woman they are in love with and they want to cheat on their wife and they want to sin against God by sleeping with that woman, they will still come and ask permission from the father. Mm. Amen. 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 Not all of them, though. But majority of them, when they come into the church and they see that father figure, and when you are a female and you are a woman and you have been denied of the love of a father, you have been denied of the authority, the power, the father figure that gives direction in your life, all through your life, they just dumped you in the boarding house or they just dumped you in the village with a grandfather or they just dumped you with an auntie somewhere and you were abused. When eventually you grow up, you mature, you come into the church. And you see this man of God operating in this dimension. Yes. And the man is sociable. And the man is caring. And the man has love. When they come into the church and they see such men as pastors, they become very vulnerable. Amen. Amen. They become what? Very vulnerable. Vulnerable means they become exposed. Mm. And they take this man as God. Amen. They worship them. They fear them. They reverence them. Not all of them, but some of them. And this is where the danger is. If the man of God 
they are now seen as the father figure uh -huh. to give them direction, to give them protection, to give them that authority, become that authoritative figure in their life. If this man of God does not have the fear of God uh -huh. and he doesn't understand why he is here, the vulnerability of such women will be misinterpreted as advances or sexual advances. Mm. Are we together? Amen. Amen. And at the end of the day, it will lead to what? Sin. Such pastors will end up sleeping with their own church members. Not only one, multiple church members. To the point that even some of, some of them are, are wives, married women. Pastors will end up having sex with them because these women are so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. What they needed was a father figure. Yes. What they needed was that authoritative voice in their life. So everything about them, they quickly come to the father. Mm -hmm. Everything about them, they quickly come to the father. Everything about them, they quickly come to the father. And if the father says, the spirit of God says, lie down. I have to measure you and I'm the measuring tape. I have to lie on you and measure you. They will quickly lie down. Amen. And the man of God will lie on them, pensioning them. <laughs> they can't say no. Amen. Because they are a child, they are a daughter, they are exposed, they are vulnerable. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the danger part is when you are not used to that authoritative voice in your life, and your spiritual father now has become that authoritative voice in your life. And you don't come to church uh -huh. on Wednesday, on Friday. And your spiritual father rebukes you. And then you have an issue. You send a message. Your spiritual father does not reply the message immediately. It becomes something else. Because a seed has been planted. Amen. What was the seed? The seed is a seed of you never having a father figure. So the anger of daddy not mm -hmm. being there. The anger of daddy deserting you and not looking for you. Even though your father has a point to say, your mother took you away. And your mother's family decided that because he was broke, they would not allow him to marry you. To marry your mom. And they took you away. And your father did not know where you were. Even though your father may have all the reasons why daddy has never been there, you grow up with, a, with so much anger mm. in your DNA. Amen. To the point that even when you get married, and your husband, uh -huh. who has been ordained by God to become the father figure in your life, it becomes a problem. Your father can, your, your husband cannot rebuke the children. Your husband cannot correct you. It becomes a problem. Some of you, the problem you have, the demon you are fighting with in your marriage, is mm -hmm. not a, a generational curse. It's not a witch or a wizard. It's a spirit of being moody. Moody. When you are talked about, when you are corrected, when you are rebuked, you become moody for the next two weeks. Hello? Amen. Because you have, you have not been used to that authoritative figure and that authoritative voice in your life. And that is why the church is so important. Amen. Growing up, I said to myself that when I grow up, I will do everything in my power to ensure that children that go to school are not whipped. They find another way to punish them. They are not whipped. Because it was a problem for me. The fact that you have to go to school. And the teachers will beat you. They will whip you. Some even join the occultic. Some children even join occultic. Occultism. To get power. So when they whip them, they will not feel the pain. Imagine. Africa. Hmm. Just right here in South Africa. If you get upset and you shout at your child, your child can report you to the police. Don't come to Ghana and make that mistake as a child. Both you and the police, <laughs> you will be disciplined in a way that you will never forget. Even the police will beat you on top of it. That you have come to report your parent, that your parent has beaten you. Even the police will beat you on top of it. That is why when we pray, we pray different from the white man. Because the demon that has been pursuing the white man cannot be compared to the African demon. We pray as though we have a problem with Lucifer. Why can we not have a problem with Lucifer? Yeah. We pray with so much anger and aggression. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When my wife will pray, she say, in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Me, when I pray, my father, my maker. My father, my father. 
Even if he forget that he's a father, I will remind him he's a father. You realize you say our background and our foundations are very different. Amen. The father provides solution to all social, national, and financial crisis. Why you need a father. Your character is determined on how you are brought up. Amen. And most people who are brought up by women, most people who are brought up by women, if you make a mistake and you marry such a man, and you don't take the man for counseling before you tie the knot, you have issues in the marriage. Amen. 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 Because even for the man to agree to have sex with you, when you wake him up in the middle of the night, he will phone the mother to ask permission. If my wife wants to sleep with me, can I go ahead? We usually call them mommy's boy. Amen. Amen. When you cook for them, they will say, ah, my mother never used to cook it like this. When you wash their clothes, they say, ah, my mother never used to wash it like this. When they have a father figure in their life, the father makes them and molds them. Socially, they have the kind of character. Amen. And they, they have the kind of attitude. And I'm talking about the good father. Amen. Because there are some that, are grew, that have grown up with their father. And the only thing they have learned from their father is abuse. Because that is what they saw their father doing. Hallelujah. Amen. You can have a father and somebody who doesn't have a father, biologically, will still grow up and have better attributes in terms of attitude and character than somebody who has grown up with a father depending on how the father brought them up. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Amen. When we talk about national crisis, financial crisis, social crisis, and the father being a solution, how does the father become a solution? If you are a womanizer, a Casanova, and you give birth, every time you go, you produce, every country you go, you produce children, you add on the problem of the country financially, socially, spiritually, you add on the problem. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when a father gives birth to his children, yes. and the father ensures that the children are well educated, that father needs to be rewarded both in heaven and by the government of the land. Because you have taken away the burden socially, nationally, financially, spiritually, of the shoulders of the government. Are we together? Amen. Amen. Psalm 68 Amen. verse 5. Verse 5, the Bible says, A father of the fatherless, a defender of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. You see, a father becomes a defense. A father becomes what? A defense. When you don't have a father, you are defenseless. You are exposed. God is using himself as an example. He said, I am the father to the fatherless. And the husband to what? The widow. So, God is speaking in parable in the sense that a father is supposed to bring a family together. Amen. A father is supposed to gather his children together and give them direction. Amen. A fatherless person has no direction. Are we together? Amen. Amen. Can I repeat it? Amen. Amen. A fatherless person, person has no direction. And that is why on the continent of Africa, even though we have government and we have presidents, we are suffering because there is no direction from our leaders. A fatherless person has no direction. The fact that you have a father doesn't mean you have direction. You must have a father that is willing and strong enough to say, my son, in this day and age, the kind of career that, that, that is in demand for employment is not banking and finance. It's probably engineering. It's probably catering. It gives you direction. Because he's supposed to know better than you know. He's Amen. supposed to see further than you can see for yourself. Amen. He said, I am the father to the fatherless. And he gives direction. He gives protection. He gives defense. Are we together? Amen. Family, are we together? Amen. Never get to a point where you make a choice to choose a man in marriage just because you are in need of a husband. Because some husbands are women. They are not men. If you have to choose a man to marry, 
Choose a man that has focus, that has a vision, Amen. that has a direction, mm -hmm. that has what? Direction. That has direction, that has a vision. There is a way I want my children to be brought up. And when I take my children to school, I want to see the teacher that will be teaching my children. And the caliber of the teacher will tell me whether there will be future for the children or not. Amen. When I want to take a private teacher, the private teacher has to be interviewed. Which church do you go to? Who is your father? Who is your mother? Did you grow up with your father? It is so very important. Amen. So don't decide to choose a husband just because you are in need of marriage. Choose a husband because the guy has a vision. Because the guy has a direction. Because yes. the guy is focused. Otherwise, you bring up your children and you drive to the mall. By the time you come, your children are walking like this. And you ask, what is happening? Their own father has molested them. It is happening. Yes. Their own biological father has molested them. To the point that some fathers can send their children yes. awkward hours mm -hmm. without protection to some of their business partners, to some of their friends, to some of their relatives. Knowing very well that this guy is not born again. This guy is not focused. This guy has no direction. This guy has no vision. And by the time you realize your daughter is pregnant for your friend. Mm. Your daughter is pregnant for your business partner. A father provides protection. Amen. He said, I am the father to the fatherless. Amen. A father provides what? Protection. Protection. Some of the people you play with, you play with them from afar. Separate from your family. Amen. They never see your children because you know what you do together with them. The day they will lay their eyes on your children, they will propose to your children. Eh? Mm. They will look for your children on social media and give them phone numbers and spoil them with money the way you have been doing to other people's children. Some of your friends, they have no focus. So you become that defender, protect your children from your friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The very day you, you, you make mistake to invite some of your friends to, to your home, your children have to travel. Visit their grandmother or their auntie somewhere. Protect them. If they are still at home, lock them in the bedroom. Let them watch their favorite TV program. Don't let your friends see them because you have become the father to the fatherless. You are protecting and shielding your, your children from the wolves, which are the friends you move with. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you, if the question is asked, would you want your daughter to marry a man like you? The question is very straightforward, but the answer will not be straightforward. Hallelujah. Amen. The answer will not be straightforward. You should be proud enough to say, I want my, my daughter to marry a man like me. And usually daughters look at their father as God. Daughters, they look at their father as God. And in the subconscious, young men also look at their mother as a model to choose a wife. Mm -hmm. The same way, some women also, as they are growing up, they see all manner of men and they say, this is not my type. This is not my spirit because they don't look like that. They don't look like their father. Amen. Hello? Amen. Mm -hmm. He may be broke. He may have an abusive kind of language. But because... These are the attributes you are used to in seeing in your father. You get attracted to him. Hello? Amen. Amen. And that is where the pastor comes in to break generational curse. Amen. And ancestral curse. Amen. Why do you need a father number two? Why do you need a father number two? Because the father is the source of life and all godliness. Your father or fatherhood is the source of life and all now, when I talk about the source of life, the word father, I've already explained to you, in the Hebrew word means Abba. In the Hebrew word means what? Abba. And Abba, translated, means genetic pool. Genetic what? Pool. Or source. Or foundation. Source. Or foundation. So, you, 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 you are in the womb of your mother for nine months. So many weeks. Is it 32 weeks that makes nine months? 
42 weeks, that makes nine months. For so many weeks, day and night, whatever your mother feels, you feel it. If she's happy, you are also happy. If she's sad, you are also sad. If she's moody, you also feel that moodiness inside you. If your mother eats, you also eat. If your mother starves herself and goes hungry, the same way. If your mother is smoking while she's pregnant, you will be born with a lip that looks like somebody who has been smoking. Amen. 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 But guess what? With all this connection you have with your mom, there is a different kind of connection when it comes to a father. Amen. Even the one who has not looked after you, the day you will be told to say, this is your father, no matter how rich or how prosperous you are, when he calls you to say, my son, sit down, it is different. Amen. You will sit down. Your father is the source of life. Amen. And that is why majority of us, we may look like our mom, but we have the character of our father. Amen. We have the attitude of our father. There are some women, when you look at them, there is no difference between them and their father. They are women who, but they look so much like their father. Because the seed for you to be born was not in your mom. That seed came from your father. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That seed came from where? From the father. That seed came from where? From the father. That seed came from your father. And therefore, because your father is the source of life and godliness, when your father does not fear God, it is so easy for you to also follow the footsteps of your father. A family that prays together stays together. Amen. A family that doesn't pray together does not stay together. Amen. So everything is dependent on the man of the house, the, the one that carries the authority, the source of life and godliness. Amen. Some family have scattered today because the father was not strong enough to put his feet down and say, we are a family, we are together. What happens to A must happen to B. Whatever you buy for A, you must buy for B. Some families are scattered together and children are fighting each other and children are jealous and are, 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 are at locker heads, locker heads with each other. There is no understanding, there is no love, there is no bonding between them because the one who was supposed to be the source of life was not there and was not strong enough to keep the family together. Amen. To the point that some women, when you, when you give birth, because you are the one who carried the child for nine months or 42 weeks, you contend with the man to say, no, I must name the child after my mother. I must name the child after my father. The man is the head of the house. Allow him to exercise his ministry. Don't contend with him. Don't fight with him. Amen. Don't contend with him. Allow him to be the man of the house. And that is why in the olden days, women were, were not considered. When there is a national census and they have to count people, they don't count women. They don't count women. They only count men. Amen. When there is, there is a, 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 a distribution of inheritance, even if you are the only daughter of your father, your father dies. The rest of the inheritance will go to the government. Eh? The God of the dead, he was a very harsh God. The God of the Old Testament, he was a very harsh God. And this is the law of Moses. That when a man dies, without leaving a man, a son, to inherit him, the blessing should be distributed among the relatives. So what happens to the daughter? Daughters were not considered as human beings. Biblically, they existed. God gave them. God blessed people with children of women. But they were not considered as human beings. Because it is the man God has given the, the mandate to control the house. There is a marriage that is not working today because they fought in the beginning. Amen. I will not allow you to name them. I must also name them according to my tribe. And when you go behind, you realize you say there is a mother or an auntie behind that is pushing the lady to be very disobedient to the father of the house, to the husband of the house. Yes. The man, you are the head of your home. Allow the man to become the head of his family. Make decisions. 
based on mutual respect. Not because you are the one who carried the woman. And at all costs, you are the one who carried the young boy. And at all costs, it is you who must make decision. If you don't allow the man to become that authoritative figure in the life of your children, the day you will need them to become that authoritative figure, the children will not even respect or obey their father. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 3. three. The Bible says on verses 3. Start from verse 2. Verse 2. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Verses 3. That it may be well with you, and may you live long on the earth. Okay, so when the man of God says, why you need a father is because the father is the source of life. Where does God come in if the father is the source of life? You realize you say, we have three types of father I've already told you, right? Yes. What is the first one? God. Heavenly God the father. father. Second one? Earthly father. Third one? Spiritual father. Spiritual father. Third one is the spiritual father. So in this case, He's talking about fatherhood in the physical realm. Either it is your pastor, your uncle, your big brother, your biological father, anyone in your life who has been playing a father figure role in your life. Scripture says they become the source of your life. If you dishonor them, you die before your time. God is in heaven. He is the one who created you. But he has now given that gift of life to the father figure in your life. Amen. So your father figure has now become the source of your life. When you dishonor your father in the physical realm, you have dishonored God who has deemed it fit to place this grace upon your father to mentor you, to direct you, to correct you, to rebuke you. When you dishonor him, you have dishonored God. And God says, this is the promise that is tied to a principle. Amen. If you want to live long, honor your father. Amen. If you want to live long, honor your father. Yes. If you want to live long, honor your father. Yes. Amen. If you want to live long, honor your father. Amen. If you want to live long, honor your father. Amen. Has it sunk in well? Amen. Yes. So longevity, longevity in this life is linked to the honor you place on your father. Your father may be a witch doctor, you may be a pastor, you may be born again, you may be a prophet even for that matter. Still, scripture remains scripture. It can never be broken. Amen. Honor your father. Your father. Honor your father. Your father. After the flood, Noah became so lonely because there was no human being. It was his wife and his children. Three children. He became so lonely Amen. that he resorted to alcohol. And the Bible says he got intoxicated. Uh -huh. And the younger son went in and saw his father drunk, mm. naked, naked, completely naked. He laughed over it. He made fun over it and went and called his other two brothers. He said, I went to the bedroom and I saw our father. He was intoxicated. Can this one even be a man of God? This one says God spoke to him and brought flood on this earth. And he's a major prophet in this life. Yes. He made fun of his father. And the Bible said his two elder brothers, when they heard of it, yes. they quickly got up from their chair. Yes. Went to their father's bedroom. But when they got to the door of the bedroom, this is what they did. They opened the bedroom with their back. They opened the bedroom with what? Their back. And carried Chitenge, both of them, carried Chitenge. When they got to the bed of the father, they placed the Chitenge on the nakedness of their father. When the father woke up, he placed a curse on the younger one. Amen. And the curse worked. The curse worked. Amen. And it did not only work on him. Uh -huh. It worked on him and generations after him. Amen. It worked on him and generations after him. Why would God honor such a curse? Because 
It is normal to see a drunkard and laugh about it. Even though he's a drunkard, he still remains your father. And when you disregard the honor of a father, regardless of whatever the father has done to you, if the father speaks in anger against you, it will easily work against you. He doesn't need a witch doctor. The elements in this life, the wind that blows, the sun, the moon, the, the soil we are standing on, the land, everything in this life will bear witness and it will fight you, it will work against you. Amen. It will fight you, Amen. it will work against you. Amen. Your father is the source of your life. If you want to live long, look for ways you can touch the heart of your father. Because when you grieve the heart of your father, he fights you according to Bible. So if you want your father's heart to rejoice automatically to be the other side, blessings will look for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Family, I say hallelujah. Amen. Look for the blessing of a father. Look for the blessing of a father. Look for the blessing of what? A father. A father. Levi and Simeon were sons of Jacob and they were mighty men. They went into a town and the prince of the town saw their sister Dinah, got attracted to Dinah and did not wait to come and pay the bride price of Dinah had sex with Dinah. And Dinah came back as a virgin with blood on her and showed it to their brother and their father. And there was anger. And these people came and said, we did not intend to defy. We didn't know your tradition. We didn't understand your culture. We did not, we did not intend to defile your tradition. What we meant was to marry this Diana. So the prince and the king came to their father Jacob and asked for their hand in marriage. And they came to this conclusion and this agreement that the only way you can, we can agree for you to marry our daughter is to follow our culture. What was the culture? The culture is that all the men in that town has to circumcise themselves. You know circumcision, right? Yes. Have to circumcise themselves. And they agreed. When they circumcised themselves, before the wound could die, Simeon and Levi got up in anger. And they went and killed all the men who were in pain. Because of circumcision, they went and slaughtered all the men in that city. So when the news came to their father, Jacob, Jacob did not utter a word. But Jacob had to flee and leave that town with his family because they have provoked the people. Amen. When Jacob was about to die, he did not forget what they did. And that is why it is very, 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 very dangerous to fight somebody who is a father figure in your life. Amen. 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 Even when they don't pray and they don't fight back, you have reduced your lifespan. It will work against you. It will fight you. Amen. 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 It will fight you. So what did Jacob do? When Jacob was about to die, he lined on his children down, starting with Reuben. He said, because you have slept with my, my wife, and stable as water you shall be. He blessed Joseph. He blessed Simeon. He blessed all of them. When he came to Levi and Simeon, uh -huh. he said, Levi and Simeon, your anger is fierce. Your anger is like a, it's like a running fire in a bush. Mm. It consumes and it destroys. But because of your anger, and he placed a curse on them as well. He did not only curse Ruby in the firstborn. He also placed a curse on Ruby because of their anger. Guess what? Moses came from the family of Ruby. Yes. Why did Moses not enter the promised land? Why? What did he do? That was so severe that God could not forgive him. Supernaturally. His father. His great grandfather. Disobeyed a father figure. Mm -hmm. That affected even the prophet. In his modern daytime, Moses made a mistake and used the rod, and that was not the only mistake Moses made. He made so many mistakes that God forgave him to the point that even when God said, You should not marry uh, from these nations that are not circumcised, and Moses traveled to Africa and chose a woman from Ethiopia, even that one, when Aaron and Miriam spoke against it. God said, how dare you speak against my prophet whom I speak to face to face. You, I speak to you in dreams. But Moses, I speak to him eyeball to eyeball. How dare you speak against him? And God placed a curse on Miriam. 
God forgave Moses. Amen. Amen. But when it came to fulfillment of life, uh -huh. there was something supernatural that was working against the guy. In anger, he lifted the rod and hit the rock. And God said, why do you hit the rock? When I said you should stretch the rod to the rock because of what you have done, your eyes will see the promised land, but your feet will never touch the promised land. Mm. What was so grievous about that simple thing that God has to place an embargo on the guy to say you will never enter into the promised land. The father figure is the source of life. Amen. And that is why people who have been members of this church, not just members of, they have been a core member of this church. And it is time for them to go to the next phase of their life. And God has given another assignment to another pastor to become their pastor. And they live without saying thank you. They live without saying bye. Even if the man of God is not grieved about it in the realm of the spirit, supernaturally, they have not honored God. And it can work against them. Not that it can, it will. It will work against them. And me, I'm not the kind of pastor when you leave church without honoring me as a father, I will begin to follow you and start calling you and start texting you, come back, come back. Salvation is personal. Amen. Salvation is personal. Another pastor will do it, but it is not me, my portion. Amen. So your father is the source of life and godliness. And it is important that you give the accorded honor and respect. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In, in Matthew chapter 15 verse 4, the younger brother came to the father and said, give me my inheritance. And it was not yet for him to receive that inheritance. True or false? He said, give me my inheritance. Mm. I pray for you that you will never get to that point in this church where you become so used to and familiar. Amen. With this altar. And with your spiritual parents. Amen. Don't ever get to that point where you become so used to. So used to. So used to. There's a message I preach on angels. And somebody sent me a message after. To say, after the service, this person called for a meeting. And said, in her former church, her pastor never preached that sermon the way you preach it. And this is a doctor who has stayed under my feet for over three years. Mm -hmm. Over three years. One sermon has provoked her to become rebellious. Uh -huh. She has gathered people together to fight the man of God. And I never spoke a word. I never spoke. Today, she wishes that I will even have the, the freedom to, to pick her phone call and just say hello to her. It will be enough for her. It will be enough for her. Just picking my phone to say hello will be enough for her. Not that I'm the only pastor in town that can help her. But there is something that is tied yes. to the anointing of a father Amen. in your life. Amen. 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 Because of shame, she cannot come back to church. Not because when she comes, somebody will embarrass her. But because of the way she has left, rebelliously. The young man said, give me my inheritance, my father. Matthew 15 verse 4. Give me my inheritance, let me go and enjoy my life. He came back with his hands on his head. 15 verses 4. On verses 4, the Bible says, For God commanded, you uh -huh. said Matthew 15, verses 4. Uh, continue, continue. For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. Verses 5. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Okay, hold it today. Verses 4 say, Whosoever. Huh? will curse, will manifest anger towards your biological father, heavenly father, or your spiritual father, and say your father is cursed. He said you what? Let him be put to death. You will die. Mm. And there are some who are physically alive, but financially you are dead. Spiritually you are dead. Socially you are dead. You are dead when it comes to divine health. There are some who are, who are working very hard. But financially, everything that is supposed to give you money is there. Hello? Amen. Family, hello? Amen. Whosoever will curse your father, 
Meaning, whosoever will come up with anger towards your father, by logical father, you should be afraid. You should be, even when you are angry and your father speaks to you, you pretend. You say, yes, I have heard, but you are angry. When you leave the presence of your father, you manifest your anger. Right? Yes. Good. In the presence of your father, yes. you are bold enough to manifest your anger and curse your father. The Bible said, you must be put to death. I never knew it was, it was there. New Testament. Uh -huh. Until this morning. Mm. I never knew it was there. He said, whosoever will curse your father, mm -hmm. you must be put to death. Never should you in your lifetime, uh -huh. heavenly father, biological father, spiritual father, yes. get to the point where you contribute and add on the pain and the agony of your father. Amen. Never. Never. You reduce your lifespan. Are we together? Amen. Amen. You reduce the fact that you, I am now your pastor does not guarantee that your spiritual father before you met me is an evil man. And he must be spoken ill of. He must be spoken evil of. Still accord him the necessary respect and honor. That is how you live long. We live in a generation where we have no value and respect for pastors and for men of God until a relative is, is seriously sick or until a relative has died and we need a pastor to come and do a burial service. That is when we see the value of a pastor. We live in a generation if a pastor is posted on Mwabantu for a birthday, come and see insult. And I wonder what is wrong with this generation. But it is only the beginning. It is part of the signs of the end time. It will become worse than this. Hallelujah. Family, I say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Respect and honor a father. Now, this young man, the Bible said, there came a day when he said, I have a father. And he has a lot of servants. And they eat better than what I am eating here with these pigs. Let me go to my father. Perhaps he will have mercy and embrace me back. Don't get to that level and don't get to that point where you have lost everything before you see the value of a father. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I'm not. Don't get to that point where you lose everything like this prodigal son before you see the value of a father. father. There are people who will only remember somebody like me after many years of leaving the church when death comes knocking on the door and they will pick phone and call and start calling my papa. Which, which, which papa? The papa you never honored by saying bye. The papa you never honored by speaking all manner of evil. The papa you never honored like, like the announcement I made, I made last Sunday. Anytime I receive a phone call from any church member that this person who left the church has called me. This person who left the church has called me. Do you know how it grips my heart? And I ask myself, what did I do to her? What did I do to her? What did I do to him? That's the question I ask. Some of the things when you hear they have said about you, you wonder which part of my body committed this crime. Was it me or there was somebody else who was using my image? Some of the things they mentioned to say you have done. You wonder, how did they come about with that kind of mindset? To come up with such stories. Just so they can defame you. What are they getting in return? When I am defamed, do you get my wife? Do you get my children? Or is the church? And then, after a while, when scripture has been fulfilled, that whoever will curse a father must be put to death. They quickly run back and start calling you Papa, Papa, Papa. You will not try this oh, in, in the occultic kingdom. Uh -huh. In the traditional kingdom. You will not, try, you will not make mistake. Uh -huh. The moment they see it in you that you want to leave the society, ha, they will kill you. Uh -huh. But in the kingdom, scripture says, when somebody slaps you here, turn here also so they can slap. Me, this scripture does not apply to me. It applies to some of you. I will not become deaf because of ignorance. What if you slap me and I become deaf in my ear? Should I tell here also in the name of scripture, I will return fire for fire. 
Number three and the last one. Number three and the last one. Number three and the last one. A father is a provider. A father is what? A provider. A father is what? A provider. Very key and very important. Amen. Matthew 7 verse 9 says, You earthly fathers, which one among you when your children is hungry uh -huh. and they ask you for bread, you will give them stock. And they ask you for fish and you will give them serpents. And they ask you for water, you fetch fire and give to them to drink the fire. Is that even you? who are evil in, by nature. You know how to give good gifts to your children. A father is a provider. A father is what? A provider. A father is what? A provider. A father is a provider. As a man, when by the grace of God, God answers your prayer and he blesses you, you should not use the money to give your side cheeks. Hello? Amen. You are sowing seed on the wrong wow. ground. Look at how the women are quick to answer grounds. When God should bless you, please take your time and spoil your wife. Take your time and spoil your children. If God should bless you and you should take 10 kwacha and give to your side chick, a side chick that is broke to the point that they have to ask you for 10 kwacha, are you going or you are coming? It's waste of time. It's waste of time. And the side chick knows that she's wasting your time. The only thing she wants from you is the money. She knows she's wasting your time. Family, any man that is here, that is connected to you, that God blesses, and doesn't use the money to provide for his children in this winter, the winter clothes your children have is as old as five years ago. When they put it on, all their stomach is bare. Because the dress only ends here. And yet, you have, you have sent mobile money, 5,000 kwacha, to a side chick, just because of what? The same sex is in your bedroom. The same sex is in your, your bedroom. When your wife should travel for only one week without communicating with you, you will lose weight without going to the gym. This same wife you are, you are not regarding and valuing. You will lose weight without going to the gym. You will see how important it is. And let's do an exchange program for the side chick to now come to your home and your wife to become your side chick. You will see how you will suffer. You will see how your children will suffer. You will see how tense you will become. Because the only good thing the side chick can give you is sex. The only thing you can also give the side chick is these small, small patches which are not changing her life. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. And you realize you say the side chick doesn't know how to cook, doesn't know how to wash, doesn't know how to take care of your children. And your life will become miserable. Your life will become miserable. When God should bless you as a father, take care of your home. Amen. Take care of your home. Take care of your home. Amen. Provide for your children. If you are a father here, and by God's grace, God has blessed you with a plot. Don't be in a hurry to put the plot in your own name. If you have a daughter, you have a son. Change the title of the plot into your child's name. As many plots as God has blessed you, transfer all of them into the name of your children. Distribute it among them. If you, if you want to keep it in your own name, right from this month, go and see a lawyer. Make a will. Amen. Amen. Make what? Away. Make a will. Secure the future of your children. The reason why God is blessing you is for the benefit of your children. A father is a provider. As a father, when your children are sick and you cannot buy medication for them, you have failed. You have what? Failed. You have failed. As yeah. a father, when your children are naked and you cannot clothe them, when your wife is naked and you cannot clothe her, you have you have what? Fail. You have what? Fail. You have failed. And you are driving a fancy car. And you are wearing a mirror shoe. When you bend down, you see your face inside the shoe. But your children have nothing to wear. They have nothing to boast about. Some of you to the point that your children even lack pen and pencils when they go to school. 
Because you don't remember the last time you took out money to say, let me take my children to the toy shop. Let me spoil them with books, assorted books, assorted story books, assorted colors of pens and pencils. You don't even remember. Oh, your mother is there. Go and ask your mother. After all, your mother is working. You are a wicked father. Scripture did not say, even you mothers, you know how to provide for your children. It said, fathers, you know how to provide for your sons. When they ask you for bread, you don't give them stones. A father is a provider. A father is what? A provider. A provider. Don't be in a hurry to buy things on credit just so you can please people around you. I'm living in Minwood. I'm living in Kabulonga. And you are paying so much rent just so you can please people around you and your children have no security in the future. If death should come knocking on the door right now, Jesus died at the age of 33. Not every young person that dies is by witchcraft. Some have fulfilled their purpose in life. But as for this church, we don't want any young person to die. I did hear your amen. Amen. We want everybody to go beyond 70 before they die. Beyond 70 before God will call them. You are not Jesus. So this scripture does not apply to me. It doesn't apply to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Secure the future of your children, church. Open a bank account, savings bank account. Make an investment. You say, when my child is at the age of 18, at the age of 20, whether alive or dead, there is money in the account for her university. Set her up. Set her up. Some of you starting from today as fathers, every month, put 20 kwacha in your account. Open a separate account, savings account, which you don't touch. You say, when my child, when my son, 18 years from now, 17 years from now, 15 years from now, on his 18th birthday, I'm blessing her with a car. I'm blessing him with a car. Make plans to provide for your children. Other than that, when you retire and your son is getting married, your daughter is getting married, you, you open your wardrobe, there will not be even one suit for you to put on on that special day to attend your child's wedding, your daughter's wedding, your son's wedding. Because you never made plans for their future. A father is a provider. A father is what? A, a father is what? A provider. And therefore, if you are not providing for your children, sometimes make plans to say, this money when by the grace of God, it lands into my account. 20,000 is for my children. If they are 10, all of them, take them to the mall, buy new clothes for them, invest in your children, provide for your children. Provide for your children. Some of us, the way we grew up, we never even had the, the luxury of wearing a shoe from the shop to school. We never even understood what it means to be bought a shoe. What it means to be bought a Christmas dress. We never had that luxury and that privilege. If by the grace of God you have come to this place of knowledge that the Father is a provider, bless your children. Provide for your children. Amen. Buy them a combat. Buy them a shoe, a white shoe. A yellow shoe, a green shoe. Let your children know that they have a father who is a provider. When God blesses you, you use the money on side check. You pay for big, 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 big hotels to go and sleep with women. You come back and say, oh God, if I am indeed the son of fire one, fire prophet, open my doors for me, connect me to my destiny helper. May God release stones on your head. May God release stones on your head because you are the most misplaced father in life. As the money has finished, you have come back to God to provide for you so you can, you can jump from the one girl to the next girl, from one hotel to the next hotel. Provide for your children. Provide for your children. You see this season we are in now, it could be worse because as far as I'm concerned, from now up to December, we never know what will happen. We are only praying and believing God because I am here. God shall intervene. Amen and help the nation. But if you should continue to the point that churches are closed, restaurants as it is now, they are closed. They open only from Friday to Sunday for the next three weeks. Gyms, the same. If you should happen to say, even all ministries, parliament, everywhere, they close it. What are you falling on? What are you falling on? If shop right, all markets should be closed for the next six months. If you go today, is there money in your account you can redraw? and stock your kitchen with foodstuffs for the benefit of your children. 
And yet, if I ask you, how much have you made this year as a man? Ah, it's uncountable. But you have not thought of your children. Amen. Amen. If there is anything that should make you sad, become sad the fact that you have no plans that when you die, your children will inherit. You have no house that when you die, your children will, will inherit. You have no property whatsoever. You have no investment. If anything should grieve you, let that one grieve you. A, a righteous man, a good man shall live an inheritance for his children, children. For his children, children. For his children, children. Since you joined this church, if it is this year, if it is last year, all the money you have, you have accumulated and paid to the hotel by taking chicks, Lusaka babes, who are more sexier than your wife. If we should, if we should put all those money together, either you can buy a plot in Lusaka, or you can go as advance payment towards a plot in Lusaka. Imagine. Don't be selfish from today as a father. Oh, I said, don't be selfish from today as a father. Amen. A father is a provider. And for those of you whose father have provided for you, this word, which is the conclusion, is going for you. Also ensure that when you find your place in a better place than your father took you up, you return the favor. You return the favor. Amen. You return the favor. Most of the time, fathers are maligned and overlooked and looked down upon. And we don't know the pains fathers go through. Mothers will take selfies with their children and they will do TikTok videos. They will do Instagram videos. They will do all manner of videos where they are having fun with their daughters and with their sons. You never see a father in the midst. Once in a while, a father will show up because fathers don't have that luxury time. They are always under pressure to make money, to pay rent, to pay school fees, to look after the welfare of their children. They don't have that luxury time. When they come to their daughter, the daughter take a selfie. Yeah. If I am seated there and Emanuela come to take my phone and say, Daddy, I'm taking a video, say something, I shut at her. Not because I don't love her. The pressure on my head. It's not a matter of, Daddy, say something. I'm thinking where I can find money to take care of you. We overlook the fathers. And fathers go through pain they can't talk to anyone about. Fathers go through so much misery. Sometimes when fathers sit in their car and they are driving alone, they burst into tears and they cry. When they get home, they have to put up a good front. So the wife and the children do not get affected emotionally because of the pain of the father. And the father goes through the agony and the pain all by herself. No one sees what the father goes through. On Mother's Day, the whole world comes to a standstill. On Father's Day, there is a comma. No full stop. No one comes to a standstill. There is a comma. Nobody celebrates the father. Are we together? Amen. Sometimes I stand on this altar sick. And I have to minister to you. I stand on this altar. Sometimes because of too much standing, my waist will be paining me. My hips will be paining me as if I am catching stroke. But I still have to minister and pray for you. And yet when God blesses you or when I make a mistake, you overlook the value of a father, the sacrifices of a father. If you have a father, even if, if your father has treated you bad one way or the other, take your time today. Take your time today. Don't send a text message. A text message is understatement. Pick a phone. Give your father a phone call. Amen. Amen. Give your father a phone call for the sake of the fact that when you were young, you didn't know your left from your right. Your father was there. He protected you. He provided for you. He fought for you. He defended you. Call your father and say, Father, happy Father's Day. Today. I thank you for all that you have done for me in the years past. Today, when you woke up in the morning, you decided to come to church, right? You knew I would be here, right? If I wasn't here, you knew at least I've laid the foundation that another pastor, my wife or Pastor Tyson can stand here and teach you the word of God. I am the father of the house. How many of you when you got up this morning you even took the privilege of your phone to send a happy Father's Day text message? This is what fathers go through. Your husband will get angry with you, but your husband will still pay your bills. 
Your husband will still make love to you in the midst of the anger. Your husband will still satisfy you and satisfy your tummy by buying food for the house. I pray that if you have a father who is alive today, don't wait Amen. for him to die before you miss him. Pick your phone and give your father a call. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Amen.